everybody and welcome to NFL Europe playoffs finally we've made it to the playoffs here I believe we stopped at week 15 when uh, we made our videos uh, but this is the final I've skipped ahead uh, because I just thought that we've seen enough of the games we don't need to see any more of the rematches here um, and I really don't have that much time to be editing those videos and the USFL videos. So I said, hey, F it. Let's just get right to the playoffs. Let's do three more games. We're going to do two here. And then we're going to have the championship game at the very end. And uh, we're going to take a look at the stats. Who got MVP? Who uh, uh, who the top four teams are? And, um, and then we'll get right to the game. So let's get into it. Like I said before, there was a substitute team. And uh, I told... I told you guys that we were going to be forfeiting all of the games from them. So they are going to be a team at the very bottom at 0 and 18. We had 16 games that were played. So minus two wins for each team. The Admirals, they went 14 and 2 and they had a phenomenal season. Just a great teamwork on offense and defense. Centurion had some surprising losses there at the end. But they ended up going 10 and 6 and securing the second place spot. The Fire had a really great uh, resurgence at the end of the season uh, as the game simulated. And they went 9-7. and seven, So they secured the third spot. The Monarchs ended up uh, winning uh, most of their games against the Claymores and Thunder. So they got the 88 and they got the automatic fourth place bid. The Claymores just, uh, just outside of that, they went 8-8 eight eight as well. As well as the Thunder, they had some problems. During the middle of the season, the Galaxy, they went 7-9. and nine. The, the Sea Devils and the Dragons both went 4-12 and 12 at the end of the season. And like I said before, the team that was substituted uh, had all the creative players. They went 0-18 through the forfeits. Right, so for our Offensive Player of the Year, it's got to be nobody other than Connor Green. He was probably one of the most efficient passers in this season. Topping it off with a 109 rating, 60% completion percentage, 3,962 passing yards, 34 touchdowns in total, with 32 of them being passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns, with only six INTs, which is the least amount of INTs by any active quarterback. He just had a phenomenal season, and hopefully he can get drafted in the BFL, which I'm going to be doing uh, later on this season. Uh, later on this year uh, but he is quite the passer man and unfortunately I can't we can't see more of him because this team just didn't get over the playoff hunt they went eight and eight this season unfortunate for him but there is a bright future with him at least in the BFL's eyes for our defensive player of the year it was a tough one I had to pick uh, between Osbury Epps Mo Quinn and LeBron Turner they were all great players on that line in the middle of the field even in the secondary with Epps but I chose Troy Osbury because his stats are pretty good for a, a middle linebacker I mean 59 tackles six for loss uh, five INTs and three forced fumbles throughout the season he was just incredible and he's definitely got a future here how old is he He's, he's only 25. He has a big, big future, bright, bright future for him, especially in my in my creative team lead, the BFL. Um, just an incredible talent, and um, we get to see more of him. He was definitely one of the reasons why they went 9-7 and seven this season, and we get to see more of him as they play against, I believe, they play against the Centurions. So hopefully they can get a win there and go to the championship game. So special teams player of the year, it was a no-brainer. I mean, Troy Willis, he just had five touchdowns, 66 kick returns, 2,000 yards. His longest run was 101 yards. It was mainly because his team sucked and they had a lot of kick returns. But, I mean, that's what you get, right? Just a no-brainer for me. It was a lot of kick returns this year. Hopefully, I could tone that down a little bit in, uh, in my other series as well. But Troy Willis, he gets denied for special teams player of the year. And finally, for MVP, it was pretty much unanimous here. It was going to be either him or Kalen Blair. Uh, Kalen Blair kind of teetered off at the end of the season. Hastings just kept it consistent. He has the legs. He has the arm. He just has it all, right? 106.2 106 rating, 
60% completion uh, percentage, which I thought was crazy. 3,718 passing yards, 35 touchdowns, 7 rushing touchdowns, so 42 in total, 455 rushing yards, which uh, is a total of 4,173 total yards. This is Cam Newton MVP numbers, folks. 12 INTs, and to round it off, he's, uh, he's second place. His team is in second place in the playoffs here. It was between him and, uh, I believe, uh, McFarland for the Admirals. He was a He's a great uh, running back. But, I mean, the things that Tyrone Hastings has done for this team, even though they teed it off at the end with the simulations, this team is really a threat with him. And he's definitely going to be a number one pick in the BFL draft. Um, definitely going to be going to Toronto soon. He is one hell of a player, and I, I hope to see a lot more of him, especially here in these playoffs. All right, so let's get to the playoffs here. We got the Monarchs and the Admirals. Then we got the Fire versus the Centurions. So let's see who gets to the championship. Game comes to you from Amsterdam as we get set for some overseas football. Welcome to this battle between division rivals from the AFC North. Amsterdam squares off against the visiting team. Amsterdam lines up in a 4-3. With the pass. He's there for the catch. The 10. Touchdown, visiting team. I'll tell you, this is nice work by both the quarterback and the receiver in his play. Watch it here. He reads the coverage, looks for the best option, and then throws it to him. Come out in a 4-3. Looking to run it here. Breaking free. Clears the defender. And this one will be spotted at the 26-yard line. Let me show you what happened on that run. Looking to run it here. Runs through the tackle. Touchdown. You're going to see what happened here. This is a bruising run. He... Throws it. It's going the other way. He didn't look off the defender, and that's why they'll be coming off Holes with a four-man front on the ground. Setting up play action. Closing in. In the zone, there's going to be gaps. Flanagan will try to put them ahead with this field goal. The field goal is good. The uprights. The pass as they're lined up in the dime. Throwing. The defense has it. The defender with room to run. The 20. Perfect timing as he goes up to grab the awesome guy. And he hands it off. And they'll score. Touchdown. Now this is exactly how to get the ball in the end zone. Just get in behind the center and guard and keep pushing and pushing until they're putting up six points on the board. Nickel Packer on the carry. Setting up play action. Gets rid of it. He's there for the catch. So they get two first downs on their last two plays. Throws it. Gilbert with the stop at the 13. It comes out in their nickel pack. Pressure coming. Throws on the run. Touchdown, visiting team. This is a good play by the offense in the red zone. The wide receiver is going to break away right here and come up with a catch and a touchdown. Amsterdam comes out in their nickel package. Uses the pump. Pressure. He does a nice job using it. That's the end of the second quarter with the score. The visiting team ahead of the Admirals, 17, 14. Pass play here on first down. Closing in. Swings it out to the right. Gilbert comes up to make the play at the 37-yard line. The blockers are in a for the four-man front. They give it to the halfback. Setting up play action. Throws it. And it's caught. Number 20 stops him. The 19. It's up. The Admirals come out in a 4-3. Under pressure. They need some better blocking out of that offer. 
The attempt is good. Three more. Henson starts out of the shotgun. Going to the air on first down. Gets rid of it. The 40. The 30. The 20. The 10. And they get him down inside the 5 to save the touchdown. This time they were inside the 20. They got a touchdown out of it. Going to the right. And he gets in there. Touchdown, Amsterdam. The defense never even touched him. Gets the pass off. The 40. And it's complete. And he's planted in the open field by number 20. Looking to take the lead as they move inside the 20. They got three points out of their last red zone trip. To the end zone. Touchdown, visiting team. Just watch his patience and poise back there. Takes his time, looks over his options, and finds his receiver in the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. That's a heck of a play. Gets the pass off. It's broken up. It wasn't much use kicking the extra point. But now they're left with only a five-point lead. Man front. Gets the pass off. He went up there and he got it. Number 20 is there for the... Only one man back. Dropping back to pass on first down. Throwing. Behind him. He has it. He loses it. The visiting team. Roll on. Unbelievable. What a time to cough up the ball. Stepping it up on third down all day. Graham comes up to make the play. The third down run, not enough to keep the drive alive, so the punting team coming in. Backfield. Hands it off to the back. Play action. Gets rid of it. And he hits his target. That'll move the change with the clock. Is Gets the pass off. Complete to the wide receiver. Vance comes up to make the pin in the backfield. Rowing right to the back. Number 54 is there on the stop at the 32. They're going to go with a no huddle. Spike stops the clock. Ball on the 32-yard line. Ball Number 16 is yard this week's line. selection for Snickers' hungriest player. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Henson back in the shotgun. Me, huh. They're blitzing with the pass. It's broken up. And it will be an interference call on that one. The only question was the defender or the receiver. Number 20. Didn't let him go for the ball. Both the defender and the receiver have a right for the ball. They're trying to do the same thing they did their last time down here. Get into the end zone. Pass play here on first down. He's going for it all. He's there for the catch. Watch this play. He's able to find a hole in the defense, and he gets into the end zone. And that's an example of how to use your personnel in the red zone and how to create mismatches. Location for international football, Cologne, Germany. It should be an exciting game featuring two teams from the AFC North as Cologne squares off against the visiting team. Pass play here on first down. Throws on the move. With the adjustment, he has it. The 30, the 20, the 10, 5. Touchdown, Cologne. When you get this kind of execution, you got a great chance of making a big play. Watch it here as everyone takes care of their assignment. The pass is thrown where the receiver can make the best play in the ball. And it's six points. And 
lineup and a 4-3. Closing in. Oh, the even big sack on that one. Stay soft, man. Watch out. Throws it. The defender's got it. Gilbert takes it back to the 50. Throws to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Centurions. Watch this catch by the tight end. I always say the tight end is always more of a threat in the red zone. He's a big target, and his skills sometimes cause matchup problems for the defense. The fire come out in a 4-3. He'll pass on first down. Pressure. Great effort that time. Closing in. Gets pulled down from behind. The Centurions get it. The ball was loose in the backfield, but the offense is able to jump on it first. Cologne goes with a four-man front. It's a blitz. Throwing. Jumps up, and he has it. And he's forced out of bounds at the seven-yard line. So far on third down for the offense, and we'll see if that continues here. Great fake. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown. This is exactly how you execute the nickel pack. He'll pass on first down. Going long. He's there for the catch. Cologne calls a timeout. They have two timeouts remaining, and it's good for a first down. Number two will have to get all of this one. He got it. So after the first two quarters of play, the score is 17-7, Centurions. You'll need to put at least the same amount of leg into this long field goal attempt as he did the last time out. A moving kick, and it's good. He's one of those guys who... So instead of the special teams group, they can let the offense stay out on the field and take a shot on fourth down. Closing in. Look here, this is not what it... The fire come out in a 4-3. Dropping back to pass on first down. Has time. He'll run this one. And he's ridden out at the eight. Here's what happened. You get a guy... Rowing swings it out to his running back, the Cologne Centurions. I'll tell you, this is nice work by both the quarterback and the receiver in this play. Watch it here. He reads the coverage, looks for the best option, and then throws it to him. On the ground. Nice play fake. With the throw, picked off. It's intercepted. Not a wise decision to throw that ball. The fire line up at a 4-3. Under pressure. He felt the pressure coming, but he couldn't get the come out in a 4-3. Gets the call. He does a nice job using leverage to get after the quarterback. When you combine that with his quick first step. Number eight scans the defense from the gun. Here comes the blitz. Going deep. He made the catch. The 10, 5, touchdown, fire. The receiver ran a perfect... That's the end of the game. The final score is the Cologne Centurions. The line fire, 14. Thank you for attending the day's ball. Please drive home safely. everyone the stage is set the centurions have to go to amsterdam to take on the admirals once again both teams have split on both teams are split on uh their matchups one on one and the centurions have one of the best offenses in the league tyrone hastings once again shows out and shows why he's going to be a future number one pick meanwhile you got the admirals who barely won their game against the monarchs with a last second touchdown. All touchdowns coming from their MVP, Hunter McFarlane. He's 
a veteran. He's about 33 years old, and he still got a lot left in the tank to acquire themselves, to put themselves in a championship game. They have the best record in the league. They are they are 14 and two now, 15 and two going in to this championship game and the Centurions want to play spoilers they want to upset them and they want to get their first ever Neo World Bowl championship victory this is going to be an exciting one it is finally coming down to this tune in next time as we will have our last chapter here in this long series here with the Centurions taking on the Admirals for the Neo World Bowl championship I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. More content coming on the way. Thank you guys for watching.